This material has been excerpted from the college television course, The Mechanical Universe, and re-edited specifically for use in the high school curriculum. The Mechanical Universe is funded by the Annenberg CPB Project, made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. A body in uniform circular motion has both constant speed and a constant magnitude of acceleration. Such uniform circular motion can describe motions in the heavens. Heavenly forms and formations became models for earthly structures. Even a primitive hand can inscribe circles. And while they can be expressed by the more sophisticated language of mathematics, concept remains relatively simple. The vector from the center to each point on a circle always has the same length. This simplicity might have been part of its appeal. From simple ideas, magnificent structures grew. The circular form of ancient Stonehenge, for example. Humans imitated nature and nature seemed to imitate them in return. The position of any point on a circle can be described by its Cartesian coordinates or by its distance from the center and the angle to the x-axis. These descriptions are related by trigonometry. for just about anyone with a head for figures. When an object moves in a circle, the angle swept out equals the angular speed times the time. Copernicus's universe had planets going around the sun and the moon going around the earth in very nearly uniform circular motion. To maintain traditional aesthetic preferences, he created a newer and more accurate vision of the solar system the Copernican system. A century and a half later, Isaac Newton revealed why it worked, starting with his theory of the moon. The moon's always falling, yet it stays in the sky. The gravitational force from the Earth makes the moon accelerate according to F equals ma. Although it continues to accelerate all of the time, it moves at nearly constant speed. This seems to contradict the very concept of acceleration. But acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, and velocity is the vector. The speed is only its length. A body can be accelerated even if its speed is constant, provided its direction changes. This point becomes clearer with the introduction of another concept, the rate of change of a vector. The rate of change of a function explains how fast it's changing at any given instant. The rate of change of a vector explains how fast the vector is changing. A vector can change by changing its size, or its direction, or both.
the change in the vector is itself a vector. The vector, V, although it's always perpendicular to R, is itself undergoing uniform circular motion. Its rate of change is the acceleration. That solves the puzzle of constant acceleration at constant speed. As a body undergoes uniform circular motion, the acceleration continually redirects the velocity vector, which continually redirects the radius vector. They all keep in step with each other constant in magnitude, but changing continually in direction. In uniform circular motion, the velocity is perpendicular to the radius vector, and the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity vector. So it points along the radius vector, but in the opposite direction. the acceleration toward the center of the circle, or the centripetal acceleration, is equal to the tangential speed squared divided by the radius. Those are the relationships among radius, velocity, and acceleration, locked together in the eternal dance of uniform circular motion. Isaac Newton understood that any body that moves in uniform circular motion is being accelerated all of the time. He called this centripetal acceleration. According to Newton's second law, a force is required to produce that continuous acceleration. For a body in orbit, that force is gravity. The length of the radius vector determines the gravitational force. This force then determines the acceleration but circular motion requires this relation among radius, speed, and acceleration. So, if a body starts out with just the right velocity, its speed stays constant, and uniform circular motion results. It's a long way from the Lincolnshire farm that nourished Newton's fertile imagination. Longer still from the mysticism that drove the primitives to question the heavens. A long way along a circular path from the past to the present and into the future. According to Newton's second law, any body that executes uniform circular motion is being accelerated by some external force. For a body in orbit, that force is gravity. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number SPE 8318420. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.